Okay, welcome everyone. Thank you for connecting on this class for Keys to Supernatural Ministry. We will begin with a word of prayer. Uh, and I want to request uh, one of us here to please lead in prayer. Who would like to lead today? Yes, Jafina, please go ahead. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you under the name of Jesus. We thank you for this beautiful day and for the beautiful class we are about to have. God, you have given us the authority and you have given us the power. And God, you are living within us. Uh, so help us to understand all these supernatural things which are beyond imagination and beyond understanding. But still, God, help us to understand it so that we can go out and do mighty things for you. We ask Holy Spirit to be our teacher. Help us to open our mind and heart and listen to each and every word pastor says we bless our pastor and i bless each and every student who is listening thank you so much for this time uh, help us to learn and to do great things for you in jesus name we pray amen 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 thank you thank you uh, jeffina uh we were looking at the possibility of living a supernatural life and how every believer has been called to do the works of Jesus. So uh, I'll go back to what we were talking about in the last class. Uh, we couldn't complete it, so we, we will quickly run through some of the scriptures which are given under uh, section one. So in the last class, we said that Jesus himself gave his disciples an invitation to do the supernatural works of God. And obviously, this was not something which they could do by themselves. So he gave them the authority and we see that he sent uh, his disciples. Later on, he sent 70 others. There was also a person whom they um, found you know, doing the, the works of God. And he told them, don't stop that man because if he's not against us, he is for us. But in all this, what we realize is that he did want his disciples to flow in the supernatural the way he flowed. And then we started observing his life and ministry. Uh, and we saw that he had something called as the sonship glory through which um, the supernatural works took place in his life. The very first instance where he's able to demonstrate the supernatural glory is when the water turns into wine and his disciples, his family, people around take notice uh, of, of this you know, ability in Jesus Christ. Uh, in John chapter 17, verses 5 uh, and 22, we see how you know he was desiring to um, go back to the Father. He was praying and asking the Father to give him the eternal or the, the uh, glory which he had as deity. Okay. Uh, and go back to that sort of a uh, glory. And verse 22, he also expresses that this glory which was given to him, which is the sonship glory that he carried on the earth, he would like his disciples, people who believe in him to have it. So that means you and I, you and I can also walk in the supernatural the way Jesus walked. Did he want us to walk in that way? Of course, it's quite clear because he prayed to the Father and he asked that we also be supernatural. So in this world, we need to be like Jesus. We, we uh, saw how the sonship glory is not only about the supernatural, but it also is about the virtues of Christ, you know, the nature of Christ, where we see um, that perfect love, perfect kindness, perfect compassion, and all of that. So we can have the nature, the virtues of God flowing out of us. We can have the supernatural power of God also flowing out of us. And that is the invitation which we have from Jesus. Then uh, the next two sections here, which we couldn't uh, touch upon, Know, in, in a in a satisfactory manner are the empowering of the Holy Spirit. It's very interesting. You know, Jesus carried the sonship glory, but together with that was the power of the Holy Spirit. 
which was made available to him. Uh, and we see this right in uh, Luke chapter 4, verses 18 and 19. Can somebody please read it for us? Luke 4, 18 and 19, please. Luke 4, 18 and 19. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set a liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Yes, thank you, Zeli, for uh, reading that passage. We read of the various um, various things that Jesus would do: proclaim, um, you know, preach the good news, uh, heal the brokenhearted, set the captives free. But how is he uh, going to do all of this? He is going to do all of this because he is empowered by the Holy Spirit, and that's what he says: "The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, and I'm going to do." All these things. So Jesus himself did the works of the Father being empowered by the Holy Spirit. He went about doing good, healing those who were oppressed of the devil. And at the time when a demon spirit is cast out, you know, he says in Matthew 12, 28, that the kingdom of God has come upon you. And it, it was by the power of the Holy Spirit that he was doing all of these works. Um, in another uh, instance where Luke records in Luke 6, uh, chapter um, uh, verses 17 and through 19, we um, read there. Let me just go to those. Yeah, uh, verse 19, it says, And the whole multitude sought to touch him, for power went out from him and healed them all. So he begins to heal diseases. He begins to um, set people free from tormented, unclean spirits. But in verse 19 there, we read about the power of the Holy Spirit going out of Jesus. So he carried sonship glory but together with that uh, here is what you know demonstrated the supernatural through the life of jesus and that is the power of the holy spirit uh, and jesus wanted the believers to have this he never restricted even before the cross he did not stop his disciples from flowing in the supernatural after his death burial and resurrection uh, he promised them no, in Acts 1, verse 8, he said, you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you shall be my witnesses. So he wanted every disciple to be a witness with power. So today, uh, it's totally okay for any believer to be excited about walking in the supernatural. It's not, uh, you know, something of... A, um, uh, something that is only kept for uh, pastors, teachers, people in the fivefold ministry, or you know, some sort of a, a special set of elders in the church who can move in these things, and everyone else will, uh, you know, just observe the others doing these works. We don't see such things in the Bible. Jesus gave the invitation. He wanted to give us the sonship glory, Holy Spirit power which he experienced in his life he wanted his disciples to have it so they waited acts chapter 2 they received it the baptism they went ahead and did the supernatural works of god so uh, god wants us to flow in the supernatural okay so there are no uh, doubts regarding that uh, we also see the last section here talks about the authority of god which is vested in us. We know in John chapter 14, verse 12, Jesus said, you shall do greater things than these because I go to my Father. And 
in this passage, he also talked about us using the name of Jesus. When we use the name of Jesus, we are going by the authority which is in that name, that powerful name, uh, and we will see the supernatural take place, you know, around us. So we said earlier, sonship glory, Holy Spirit, and now we have the authority which has been given to us, authority which we can use by, um, by taking up the mighty name of Jesus. Uh, and in all these ways, every believer can see God's powerful works being manifest around us. Okay, So uh, I just want us to ask this question. Are we convinced that we need to be flowing in the supernatural or are there still some questions regarding this or doubts should regular believers flow in the supernatural or whatever we've discussed till now is it convincing enough Okay, convinced, convinced. Okay, two people on this call are convinced. How about the others? The others too. Okay, thank you for that. It's okay to not be convinced. If you have any questions, it'll be nice for us to discuss. All right, I think it's quite clear that Jesus invited all of us to flow in the supernatural. Now, uh, since you are not asking me questions, I will ask you a question. So why is it uh, that believers are not able to demonstrate the same power uh, as the Lord Jesus did 2,000 years ago? What do you think? We are saying that we're supposed to walk in the supernatural, but why is it that we don't see believers demonstrating the same kind of power? Okay, thank you uh, for the answers on the chat. So Jeffina says, lack of faith, Lyndon, lack of faith or prayer, good answers, very good answers. What else is preventing us from, you know, walking in it? Uh, Pastor, maybe in some cases, like the guy, no, I feel the pastor does not give the freedom or the permission, like to go and operate in faith with authority. So the congregation is dependent on the pastor for healing and for every other thing. So maybe they look up to the pastor for it. So they feel and they don't operate in it mm. yes yes Rosalind this could be one of the reasons why some people don't flow in the supernatural yeah that's correct and uh Paul says sin uh Zeli not have the full revelation correct so you know, all of us have some valid points here as to why, uh, though we have an invitation from Jesus, we don't see the full manifestation of the power of God. Um, but do we expect to see, uh, you know, the supernatural as we move closer to the second coming of Christ? What do you think? Any opinions? We are supposed to demonstrate the supernatural. Right now, we are not seeing it the way it happened in Jesus' life. So should we get there? Will we get there? 
any thoughts on that Okay, so uh, not many opinions as far as I can see here on the uh, chat. Okay, John says we should do the way Jesus did, right? And we will get there soon. That's great news. Thanks, John. Encouraging. We will get there soon. Uh, Zeli uh, says, yes, we need to because the scripture says we will uh, do much greater things than Jesus did. So it is in God's expectation for the church to uh, increase in the supernatural. Yes, we should be like Jesus. We are not. There can be many reasons, uh, some of which you pointed out here, you know, lack of faith, lack of prayer, lack of uh, full revelation uh, of, you know, this truth and reality. But uh, the fact is that more and more people, I think, now in what God is doing around the globe, we are hearing about the supernatural. We are getting a grip on the truth regarding the supernatural. Uh, the word of God is being preached more and more regarding the supernatural. And how do we come to an understanding when there is revelation, isn't it? So when this is taught, obviously more people will be aware that this is what God's word says. And in that manner, the church will be built up to experience more of the supernatural. Uh, we must not be discouraged by the fact that you know we don't see enough of it or we don't see it uh, at the level that we expect no uh, we are journeying with god and the church will get there the church should get there that is god's expectation so you now keep growing keep moving forward and the uh, church will also be church will also demonstrate that power okay so that is about the possibility of all believers flowing in the supernatural. And I think we have um, <coughs> discussed, uh, you know, uh, this subject sufficiently. Are there any more questions, any more comments? All right, so I'll take it as uh, we are convinced and we can move forward to the next section here. Uh, and this next section is about us understanding some keys of uh, supernatural ministry, keys to supernatural uh, ministry and life. These keys are not a formula, but having an understanding of these keys will um, help us flow better in the supernatural. So we will first go with these keys. We will study them one by one. Uh, following these keys, we will take some time in learning about personal preparation for uh, each of us to flow in the supernatural. So what are the keys to supernatural ministry in life, uh, you know, and you know, as we stated in ministry? So for the supernatural in life and ministry. So here they are, uh, enlisting eight of them. The first one is to understand the realm of the spirit. Okay, uh, we will talk more about that soon. So to understand the realm of the spirit. The second key is to understand faith. What faith is, how faith operates, um, and so on. Then we need to understand the power of the word, the power of God's word. 
fourth key is developing a renewed mind fifth is to have the anointing of the holy spirit sixth god's presence and glory seventh proclamation and action eighth is persistence so when we have an understanding of these eight keys it will open us up regarding the supernatural so first is to understand the realm of the holy spirit we as believers we recognize that there is a supernatural realm if you ask any believer do you believe in god obviously they call themselves a believer yes they do believe in god uh, do you believe in uh, the son of god yes they believe in the son of god do you believe in the holy spirit yes i believe in the holy spirit uh, what about the power of the holy spirit they would say yes okay um do you believe that god can do miracles god can do uh, you know wonders he can perform signs a believer would say yes i do okay but the challenge is always when it comes to uh, the release of the supernatural through the life of a believer so when we ask a question like do you believe that god can release the supernatural through your life or through your ministry that's where i think most of us struggle we are not sure we're not sure if you know uh, we will we we will see uh, um, let's say the impossible accomplished in our situation we're not sure it may happen but uh, we are not clear on that same way in ministry when we pray as believers are you convinced that uh, the gifts of the spirit can flow through your life are you convinced that the holy spirit can work uh, god's power can be made available people will get healed people will get delivered uh, miracles will happen we are not sure so this is where we kind of get stuck okay so in order for us to uh, expect the supernatural as natural we have to have the understanding of all these keys uh, and, and you know that will help us flow better or let the supernatural flow better through our lives so coming to the first key understanding the realm of the spirit uh, for us as believers though we know there is a supernatural world there is an unseen realm where god is there angels are there uh, you know there are also demonic spirits we we acknowledge these things but we need a better understanding of these things and secondly we need to know that the supernatural realm overrides the natural realm in other words things that take place in the spiritual realm okay i'll call it a spiritual realm or a supernatural realm they will have a bearing on the natural realm okay so uh, i'm going to share all of these these uh, truths yeah, if at all you have questions just feel free you can uh, interrupt what i'm saying and go ahead and ask your question so there is a spiritual realm there is a supernatural realm and that realm overrides the natural realm there are spiritual laws which override the natural law okay and that's why we call it supernatural for example why do we pray as believers you know we pray and we say god uh, i need your direction so maybe in a given situation we are not aware of what the right thing to do would be or what is the end result of my decisions but what do we do we pray so when we pray what we're actually saying is 
God from his realm will answer and something will be done in my realm. Okay, so it's it's a supernatural law. I'm following prayer. And through prayer, God is able to intervene in my situation. So you see, there are these laws, there are these spiritual um, principles, like you could even talk about faith. If you're going through a very difficult, like a dead end situation, but we employ faith, right? Can miracles take place? Can healing take place? Yes, it can. But there may not be a natural explanation to uh, what has just happened. Uh, let's say somebody is very sick. Uh, let's go to a biblical example. There's a man who's paralyzed. He's paralyzed for some 38 years uh, and Jesus comes. He's paralyzed for 38 years. How can he walk? How can he be made whole? But Jesus moves by faith. Okay, He does the impossible in this man's life. And so from the supernatural realm or the spiritual realm, something is accomplished for him. There's a lady with you know, an issue of bleeding. She comes to Jesus. She's gone to many doctors. And the natural report says, no, you can't be made well and scriptures also tell us she you know spent a lot of money but it was of no use but she's employing the law of the supernatural realm which is faith and she just tells herself in her heart if i only touch the hem of his garment i will be made whole and she touches the helm the uh, you know the uh, edge of his garment and the supernatural law takes over by her faith she was made well so you see, uh, there is a supernatural world. There are laws that operate in the supernatural world. And for us as believers, in order for us to experience the supernatural, to release the supernatural, we have to be very aware of both of these realms. Now, this doesn't mean that, you know, we... Though we live here on the world, you know, we talk of all spooky things. Yeah, I can see an angel flying. No, it's not like that. But it's more of being aware. Yes, this natural realm is limited. But I can always walk by the laws of the supernatural realm to see God's work accomplished in the natural realm. So, you know, I will pray or I will, I will have faith. Uh, I will, you know speak the word of God and there will be a change. There will be a, a way made in the wilderness for me. So for a believer to demonstrate the supernatural, I have to walk with the awareness of these two realms and make sure that at points where I need the supernatural realm to intervene, I know how to you know, go by uh, the, the laws and make it happen. So does it mean that, you know, we deny the facts of the natural realm? Sometimes we, we are all aware. We are in a situation where uh, the medical reports don't look good. We are in a situation where, let's say, the bank balance is not supportive of, you know, what God wants you to do. There are all these limitations. But being aware of a spiritual and a supernatural realm doesn't mean that we are denying the natural. No, we are not denying natural facts. Yes, Abraham was old, Sarah was old. That's a fact. But what is greater than the fact? They have a God who promised them that they will still bear a child in their old age. So what is in the spiritual overrides or is above what is in the natural. That's what we are saying. Uh, and we are saying that as believers, when we are aware and we know how to let the supernatural invade the natural, we will see you know, these mighty works of God being done. So, uh, yeah, we, we must live uh, so to speak, in both the worlds. And if I may use a word called amphibious, you know, amphibians, they are creatures who know how to live in water as well as on the land. 
in the same way for every believer uh, to see the supernatural release to our lives we have to be amphibious we are living in the natural world but we are aware and connected to the supernatural world so before i go any further i want to pause and check whether you are all still here whether you are awake and whether you know you are able to understand or is it too much at this point to talk about the supernatural realm are you getting what we are talking about okay that's nice nice to know wonderful okay great so the first key is about us being aware of the uh, supernatural realm and as part of this there are you know some things that we must get a grip of first is the greatness of god okay uh, by that what we mean is god can do the impossible from the realm that he lives in so for god time is not a limitation right our natural resources are not a limitation so he lives outside of time and space he is the god of the impossible so uh, when i am aware of two realms i analyze my situation based on the natural realm but i don't stay there also recognize that i'm connected with a god who can do the impossible from his realm okay so when that is my perspective when that is my faith i can see god do many things in my life in other words god you know he is able to do it but my cooperation with god will cause those things to take place you know i will i won't stop at uh, the bad news and you know just stay there but immediately i i'll say hey this looks like a, a tough situation but god can still open a door for me you know god can still heal the sick god can still uh, you know make a way so god is a god of the impossible so when i'm aware of the supernatural realm i must also be aware that there is a god who is greater than what i can see in my uh, or perceive in the natural and in the uh, you know the limited realm that i live in so be aware of the greatness of god uh, and when i'm aware of the greatness of god it will only move me to uh, partner with god i'll partner with god in prayer i'll partner with god through my faith and you know supernatural things will begin to happen secondly when i talk about the supernatural realm i must engage in that realm through the laws which god has given me so these are some spiritual laws uh, and uh, you know as i put if i operate through those laws i can have confidence that i will see results in the natural realm so for example a law like covenant god has a covenant with us it simply means that the promise is unbreakable okay so if you look back at the uh, life of abraham and you see how god promised him no abraham held on to that promise because he would have had an understanding of what this word covenant meant against all odds the book of romans says abraham believed how could he believe because he would have had the awareness of the covenant that god had with abraham the promise which god made with abraham so similarly when i today i understand uh, a, a law like covenant when i go through sickness you know i won't uh, pray prayers that say oh god you know you've given up on me uh, i don't think you think about me anymore god why have you forgotten me 
you know instead knowing this law of covenant as a child of god i would say god you have a covenant of healing with me so i go by that covenant your word says that you are jehovah rafa your word says that you know you forgive all my sins you heal all my diseases your word says that by the stripes of jesus i am healed so i am holding on to that law or that principle of covenant and things begin to work in my life similarly you know, i could look at other uh, spiritual laws like faith and i operate by faith anything that you whatever you pray believing you will receive you know whatever you ask for believe and you shall have it so when i'm operating by the law of faith what happens i have great confidence that there will be a result from the uh, spiritual world okay so uh, we need to recognize and understand these laws if we don't understand the laws then we are not clear how to see the supernatural manifest in my life i wouldn't you know be doing it the right way but when i know these laws and i operate by these laws um, i will have confidence that god will do the supernatural will show up because this is what the word of god says you know when i operate on the basis of covenant or i operate on the basis of faith there will be results so understanding the laws of the spiritual world will also release the supernatural into our lives we must understand the ways of god the way god chooses to work what do we mean by this um, again i'm just dwelling on that faith aspect would god not respond if we are desperate or would god not respond you know if i am uh, coming to him with a prayer of you know, great sorrow and pain and crying and that should be enough for god to respond to my prayer but that's not what god said you know he said that we need faith so whatever you ask if you ask believing you shall receive whatever you ask if you ask crying you shall receive no, he never said that that's not the law he didn't say whatever you ask if you ask begging you shall receive no the spiritual law is faith so psalm 103 verse 7 it says that uh, god showed moses his ways and the children of israel his acts so moses was aware of the way in which or or the the methods or the laws through which god would operate so he led the people accordingly so uh, you know he walked with the lord god gave him the instruction and he knew that okay i need to obey let's say obedience obedience is is a law when i walk in obedience i will see results so god told him moses you go stand before the red sea you raise up your rod and the red sea will part so moses knew i must go by the principle of obedience when i do that the red sea will part so he knew the ways of the lord and in that manner god led him you know there was the wilderness experience but moses knew how to hear from god how to follow his instructions there was manna there was quail there was protection you know through the through uh, the cloud and the pillar of fire so the ways of god uh, were known by the man of god and because of that he was able to see the release of the supernatural for the children of israel see it would have been good even for the children of israel to know the ways of god how does god operate but somehow they only saw what god did but they didn't know how god operated but here was the man of god who was aware of the ways in which god operated similarly for us today you know there are all these laws spiritual laws in scripture laws of the spiritual world when i become aware of them i will know how to see you know the supernatural or the spiritual world intervene in my circumstance uh god's people should be taught these things 
you know to operate themselves now what's happening maybe they observe their pastor you know flowing in the supernatural and that's good enough for them whenever they want uh, the supernatural as rosalind said they will go and say okay pastor pray for me pray for my healing uh, but it'll be really nice if people are taught and they also understand the ways of god and you know they also are able to flow in these things at some point uh, so you know we we are beginning to understand there is a spiritual world god is great he can intervene from that world into us and for him to work for us to see his power we need to know the laws we cannot make it happen you know any way we like but we go by his laws uh, and then it really works so we need to understand the dynamics of this so things like power of faith power of words power of um, you know sowing and reaping you see so all of this is already set in uh, what god has revealed to us so i need to walk in these things uh, things like obedience things like um, you know the the uh, declaring the word things like worship uh, you know things like giving so things like walking in righteousness things like you know putting on the the armor of god um, so all of these are principles and i follow these things when i follow these things i will see the results of the supernatural realm again i just want to uh, remind us there is no formula but it's about our relationship with god and uh, our close walk with the holy spirit so the holy spirit will impress on our hearts at those moments and say okay come on you know i you need to be obedient you need to sow you need to declare all that and we flow in line with what holy spirit is telling us and the supernatural invades our lives and the power of god is seen so talking about the supernatural realm uh, we also recognize that there are heavenly beings okay there are angels that the bible talks about uh, so when i'm aware of this uh, scriptures tell us in hebrews 1:14 that these angels uh, give aid to the heirs of salvation or they are here to help us who believe in jesus christ so i can also operate you know uh, with the knowledge of how these angels function we also know from god's word and some 103 verse 20 that the angels respond to the voice of god's word so how can i uh if i may say activate angels when i declare the word i believe the word and i declare the word i can have angelic activity angels uh, can come and aid they can help they can protect they can do all the functions that they are designed to do so i'm able to employ i'm able to see the supernatural realm affect my natural realm because you know i am going with the awareness that this realm spiritual realm exists and i have all these laws that will help me tap into it there are also these heavenly beings that god has given to uh, you know uh, help me in in my uh, manifestation of the supernatural so you know things like this a believer needs to be aware a believer can't say that uh, yeah i believe in god but i'm not sure about you know uh, uh, how to tap in to the rest of the supernatural similarly we know that there is a demonic uh, realm out there and we know that the the demons will come against mankind in general and god's people in particular so how do i <coughs> operate in such a way that i stop these demonic powers we already know from scripture that we have the authority so when i pray prayers i would pray prayers to bind the works of the devil i would pray prayers that will you know restrict and limit the work of the enemy i will pray prayers to cast out demons stop their interference 
know uh, uh, into into the natural realm so this is the way in which a believer will operate when he is aware that there is a very real spiritual realm and uh, the believer knows how to get the the results from the spiritual realm okay so uh, we have to become aware and also take the right steps for in order for us to experience the supernatural so it's just an introduction uh, i know we've run out of time for today but if you have any questions regarding the spiritual realm um, and how to live in both the realms at the same time please feel free you can post your questions on the stream page we can begin the next class by answering some of your questions okay so yeah i think as we go forward slowly um, the subject about the keys to supernatural ministry will get clearer uh, so yeah those of you who are finding it a little challenging uh, i just want to encourage you please stay on the course it'll get better okay so we're wrapping up right now any any questions before we uh, close off the call or comments Okay, if not, let's uh, close with a word of prayer. And I want to invite uh, any other student to please go ahead and pray. Okay, uh, yes, yeah. can I, go ahead. Can I, can I pray? Yes, please, uh, Brother Isaac, go ahead. Father, I want to thank you. I want to glorify your name. We lift your name above all other names. Father, I want to thank you for giving us the opportunity to come back to do our cause, especially with our admin. Now we are taking the cause, the keys to supernatural ministry. The keys, Father God, keys are for open doors. Please open the doors of our mind, our heart, our soul, so that we can be receptive to the cause and let the cause be part of us. Let it be part of us. Let us be instrument to receive and then instrument to deliver your word. Father, I want to thank you for everything that you are doing in our lives, in our school, in our cause. We want to thank you for our lecturers. We want to thank you for the faculty. We want to thank you for everybody in the ministry. Father God, we want to ask for your forgiveness. If we are going wrong, we are children. We always go wrong. We want your grace to cover us. This and all other masses we ask in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Brother Isaac. And thank you, everyone. God bless you. Uh, please think about the supernatural. And uh, let's connect again next week. God bless you. Bye for now.